Anytime you are implementing something big, um, there's going to be people who are nervous and anxious about is it going to get done until it's actually done. Um, but, but let's just step back for a second and, and, and make sure the American people understand what it is that we're doing. Uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, uh, has uh, now been uh, with us for three years. It's gone through Supreme Court tests. It's uh, gone through efforts to repeal. Uh, a huge chunk of it's already been implemented. And for the 85 to 90 percent of Americans who already have health insurance, they're already experiencing most of the benefits of the Affordable Care Act, even if they don't know it. Yeah, their insurance is more secure. Insurance companies can't drop them uh, for bad reasons. Their kids are able to stay on their health insurance until they're 26 years old. Um, they're getting free preventive care. So there are a whole host of benefits that for, for the average American out there, for the 85 to 90 percent of Americans who already have health insurance, um, this thing's already happened. And uh, their only impact is that their insurance is stronger, better, more secure than it was before. Full stop. That's it. You know, they don't have to worry about anything else. The implementation issues come in for those who don't have health insurance, maybe because they have a pre-existing condition and the only way they can get health insurance is to go out on the individual market and they're paying 50 percent or 100 percent more than those of us who are lucky enough to have group plans. People who are too poor to get health insurance and the employers don't offer them. Uh, maybe they work for a small business and uh, the small business can't afford right now to, uh, to provide health insurance. So all the implementation issues that are coming up are implementation issues related to that small group of people, 10 to 15 percent of Americans, now it's still 30 million Americans, but relatively narrow group, who don't have health insurance right now or are on the individual market and are uh, paying uh, exorbitant amounts for coverage that isn't that great. And what we're doing is we're setting up a pool so that they can all pool together and get a better deal from insurance companies. And those who can't afford it, we're going to provide them with some subsidies. Norman Graham is here, Community Health Society, Service Society. Right. David R. Jones, he writes for the Amsterdam News. He's doing a lot of things. Please give us your bio. Um, I started out uh, as a lawyer, corporate lawyer. Then I went into the uh, city administration, working ultimately as head of new services for the city of New York. That was quite a while ago. Uh, left in 1986. To take on the role of president and CEO of Community Service Society. This society has been running for how long? Uh, 170 years. 170. Yeah, I haven't been here. Well, we we know that. We we glad. Just feel that way. Yes, you know, I listened to you the other day, a couple of weeks ago, on um, Open Line. Right. And you was explaining eloquently uh, the Affordable Care Act, right. aka Obamacare. Sure. And I'm intrigued. I have I'm worked. New York City Department of Corrections. Right. I've also had my own security firm. And I wonder, how is this going to help our people of color? Well, it, 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 many of your uh, viewers may know that the principal cause of bankruptcy in the country uh, is health bills. And if you're uninsured, and I think all of us have seen it happen, either to friends or to family, where if you go into a hospital, even for the most simple procedure, uh, you can run up bills in the tens of thousands of dollars almost for the most simple procedure. Uh, $10 for aspirin. Yeah, well, it's almost that bad, but uh, appendix uh, removal, which is a very standard, can run $20,000 or $30,000. And for people with no backup, that can wipe you out. Yes. And that's what's happening. And that's really what Obamacare and the ACA is about. It's particularly for people, working people for America, uh, who uh, formerly didn't have access to insurance uh, because basically either their employers didn't offer it, and 
that's very true for many low-wage jobs in, in the city. Or if they did offer it, the costs were so high and prohibitive uh, that you couldn't afford it. One of the examples we use is if you're a security guard. I was about to ask you about that. A security guard is earning, you know, anywhere ten, eleven dollars an hour. Eight, depending upon the contract. Right. And basically, the cost of coverage would basically take almost a third of that hourly salary okay. under the the old system. Okay. So people say, "I'm feeling healthy. I can't do that." Uh, and then, of course, something happens. Uh, either a child gets sick in their household or someone comes down with a fever and suddenly they show up at an emergency room uh, and have to get treatment that lasts even a couple of days. New system, same yep. security firm. I had one. Right. See, security is, is work with contracts. Right. So if I got a contract and I'm trying to make my workers support to have their family right. taken care of, so if I can only get this contract for $9 an hour, right. $9 an hour, because yep. a quarter could be the difference of if I get the contract if I lose it. it. So I'm lowball. So I got nine dollars an hour. Well, I got ten workers here, fifteen workers here, a uh, different contract. The bottom line is it winds up I got over fifty workers. Yep. But if over fifty means I have to have health coverage, right? But and I can't afford it. What's happened with Obamacare it hasn't been explained very well. We can't you know, deny that is that not only uh, is the focus on individuals who don't have care, there's a specific focus on small businesses, like what we're discussing here. And small businesses get uh, the right to, first of all, uh, go and to the state of New York and to CSS in many cases, because yes. we're the principal navigator for the state. And we have about 39 not-for-profits who are serving different communities, and many of them focused on small businesses. Okay. In chambers. Um, they come and get the lowest cost, and depending on the size of their business, they're also involved, you know, entitled to a significant tax credit. So that means size of the business, but do you take in consideration of the contract? Absolutely. Okay. And that's, I think, what, what we're good at, mm -hmm. and we'll give the numbers before we're, we're okay. much older, um, is sitting down with the individual business person and laying out the parameters of what they're doing. And this is not you know, a cookie cutter, and that's why the navigator function comes to us for people with more complex problems. Okay. Many people can just go to the state and federal website, tap in their numbers, you're done. That's, that's kind of a little it, tedious process. Yeah, it's tedious, but no worse than you know when you go and, and figure out your taxes. It's the same idea. Okay. So you, we act as sort of, you know, H&R HMR block or something, but we're not getting paid for it other than, you know, we're doing a city and state function. We're not in this for profit, that's where we're not for profit. But many people, and I'm talking individuals mm -hmm. and people, small businesses, need assistance. And yes. that's, that's the role we play. But the monies, and we have some prototypes, have been enormous. We have one of the profiles of um, a guy do, with an auto repair shop mm -hmm. who very much wanted to provide uh, services. Okay. After we worked this out, he came in, he was providing some level of health insurance, but very rudimentary before. Now, for about half the cost, he's providing a much better plan that his workers can in, 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 you know, afford. I think what's gotten mixed up in the political turmoil here, Obamacare, ACA, mm -hmm. is really about working people. Yes. And okay. particularly for black and Latinos, mm -hmm. it is critical. There are 550,000 know, uncovered people in the city of New York alone. 550,000. Right. Okay. And across the state, more than a million. Mm -hmm. So this is big time. And as you look at the demographics of those individuals, it's over overwhelmingly us. How do we get them there? Uh, Keisha, Tamika. Single parents, two children, twenty thousand dollar income. Twenty. Why should I go to Obamacare when I can go to the emergency room? Wait, 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 okay. That's the first part. Right. As well as, I'm not going to spend two hundred dollars a month. They're not spending it. What do you do? How do you attract them to see? I, I think come? a couple of things. First of all, they have to find out mm -hmm. where they're at. Mm -hmm. Like everything else. People can make a rational decision about all sorts of things. They can't stop and not inquire because not only, unlike the businesses, they're not 
entitled tax credit. They're actually entitled to a, a subsidy, to money mm -hmm. coming to the them to make their health care affordable. And that's why they have to call up and find out. Before they say, oh, I'm not going to touch that, they have to engage and find out because the differences can be extraordinary. Most people, particularly young people, young working people, who make up 20,000 or something, say, I'm healthy. Why mm -hmm. should I bother for this? Yes. The difficulty overnight and with, is a sick child can literally wipe you out, even if you end up in an emergency room. You know, we agree. You can end up being billed and having your, uh, essentially, your income you know, attached. And it happens all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Bankruptcy happens. We agree, motion. we agree. But so they have to engage. To the, well, I think, I think it, the story is that. Here. It's a group here. Right. And I've been on a White House website. Right. Really look. I, I, I would love to see our president do well, right. but I have a problem on how you're going to reach the masses of people. And that's why they put in New York State. We have them not lead in everything. Mm -hmm. I've been a, you know, complaint. I've complained about New York State and state. In this, mm -hmm. New York State is well ahead. I agree. Obviously, the the website never failed in New York State uh, for people signing up, and they also put in intermediaries to help people navigate and see what they've got. That's why a call to our hotline, we have a number, uh, they can talk to an individual who's highly trained, who's been trained both by the federal government and us. What's the procedure for that? Well, you just pick up the phone, uh -huh. you dial in the number, and say, look, this is what I'm earning. No, 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 that's not, 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 not the question I'm asking is, see, we also need jobs in our community too. Yeah. So. Something like this will put jobs if they can get out. Of course, there's a, commu a, a, a genre of people that we have to get out here and speak to. So if we can get some young people some jobs and say, hey, you need to go out to other young people and market this here. It's happening somewhat in terms of using the church, you know, the black church, where we're sending out trainers to talk to people and explain to them how they can help people do this as part of their church group and the rest. I think the urgency now, and we're, we're down to a very narrow time frame yes. of signing up individuals. And businesses have been given a year's grace period, but individuals really have to focus now on getting signed up and getting this essentially monkey off their back because, again, you don't want to be caught without health insurance. Is it fine right. for that? Am I correct? Yeah. There's a fine. It's it's minor. I, it's not. It's, it's not, not even enforceable. It's not, yeah, correct. Right. It's right. It's but the fine is not the issue. It's, it's issue. what it could do to you I, I as agree, an individual. But I keep it. My biggest problem is a lot of people in our community will not do it. Well, I think that's the. And if it, 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 not, not to get, but it messes with Obama's number, the president's numbers, or what he's anticipating. As I said, I went on the website. And I really don't see anything that will make these young people, the people that need, we can agree, right. from 26 to 40, right. is the generation that's affected. Yep. The immigrants, the guys that's illegal immigrants, the guys that's out there at the Home Depot, the day laborers. Well, I think that's why, and it's not true for the whole country, mm -hmm. there's their problem nationwide. New York and a handful of other states are in the lead. We, uh, I think, signed up about 125,000 people. Yes. No, I think we're the biggest cohort almost in the nation now in terms of signups. And most of those people are just the demographic you're talking about. It's a, somebody who's made it to making not a great salary, but they're getting along. They're not on welfare. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that really are the ones who are most uncovered. And those are the people we have to talk to. And the difficulty is there are a couple of things. When we set up our network and the way we work with the state, we need, um, and that's why we don't do it centrally here. I have, we have a hotline mm -hmm. with a number that people can call, but we have local representatives in, uh, involving smaller community groups and church groups who have some credibility mm -hmm. with somebody coming in. I'm very uncomfortable when someone picks up the phone and says, I'm calling from X, here's what you do, and just tell me all your information how much you earn, what I'm doing, yes. and that's why we have to break through this. It's 12 so, pages. I mean, yeah, it's 12 pages. It's not that difficult, mm -hmm. but if I'm doing, you know, I'm working a night job or three jobs mm -hmm. to keep my 
myself and my family, I can't focus. Do the so, time restraint. If I wanted to get out here and do this, and if I wanted to enroll people. The difficulty we have is that uh, because elements have gotten involved who have used uh, ACA mm -hmm. uh, for fraudulent means, mm -hmm. that there's a vetting process that has to go on that takes, it takes a couple of weeks for the training. Mm -hmm. And I think going forward, we're going to be able to expand this outreach yeah. to involve people who want to do this work and are interested in this work, but it's going to have to take place going forward in 2014 mm -hmm. and beyond. Now we have to enroll as many people as we can to make sure this law survives. Because I, too, this is one of the critical legacy programs for Obama and for us. If it fails, no one has any alternative. No. And that's what I'm so worried about. We've been hearing all sorts of criticisms, oh, it's this, the website doesn't work, but not one alternative. From the right, than, from other, the right, of course. From the right, as to how somebody who's working their tail off is going to get any kind of coverage whatsoever. Last question before this se yeah. segment. Will this possibly lead to single pay? It may. I, given the political uh, split in the country and the fact that people will have to see it happen, it, it, in some cases, I'm not this old, Social Security went through the same growing pains. Mm -hmm. And I think the more and more people, as we start to hit a half a million, a million people, getting enrolled, the notion of taking this away will lead to other issues that, yeah, I've got my coverage, uh, I can afford it, but it's not providing the kind of services I need. I want, I, you know, I need to have you know, pharmaceuticals, I need to help, and I think that's going to open the door for the second part of this discussion, which is single payer. We'll be right back with a message from the sponsor. I think health care obviously is, uh, is the dominant theme of people who are struggling in New York City. So. Is it possible you can give me some examples of well, a, a, a 30 year old family yeah. of two, a four, four? I can tell you basically. 25, 30, something off the top of your head. Yeah, I think I, I still remember one of the cases we mm -hmm. had a slightly older, a younger person than that okay. who was 24 years old. Um, who had something, a very serious chronic problem called Crohn's disease, okay. had gone for treatment and the bill came back $30,000, $40,000. Um, she then went to get to her insurer who said, I'm sorry, we're dropping you. You have a pre-existing condition. Yes. She uh, came to us and basically we were able to do a couple of things. First of all, because New York State is unique in some ways, of extending coverage for people between after they leave the household right till 26. Mm -hmm. um, it allows uh, individuals to be on their parents' plan. This individual, this young woman who was working full time, was able to get back on her parents' plan. We were able to drive back the insurance company that tried to drop her for pre existing condition because that's illegal now. Yes. And for many of us, you know, with hypertension, you name diabetes. it, diabetes, we have high prevalence of pre existing conditions that insurance companies were routinely saying, we're not going to cover you. You've got issues. Yes. Now they can't do that. So this was sort of a, a, a final step. We went back and renegotiated the debt. And basically dropped her forty thousand to five thousand dollars. Okay. So those are the kinds of things that can be worked. Now, out of that five thousand, how much was going to be out of pocket? 
I think for her that was five thousand dollars, but instead of wiping her out, yes. and they we were able to extend the time she had to pay that. Okay. So that it's it's tough. I'm not, you know, five thousand dollars when I've got a low wage job is huge, but it doesn't mean you wipe yourself out financially forever. Tell me something. What are some of the myths of Obamacare, aka Affordable uh, Care Act? It's the myth is that it's going to drive small businesses out. The other myth that has obviously got a lot of prevalence that people with uh, high-end policies will be canceled uh, because uh, you know the uh, insurers don't want to deal with that kind of Obamacare issue. Mm -hmm. But the myth is also that this happens across the board. There are problems that are being worked on with Obamacare. But if I'm earning twenty to forty thousand dollars and I'm working really hard to get my family launched, Obamacare is literally a godsend. Okay. And I'm most worried because these are the people who are struggling most. I'm very worried about people who are earning large amounts of money, 150, 250, that's not a lot of money mm -hmm. really in New York, but they're going to be able to navigate. They'll find a way. Okay. I'm worried about someone just launching your 26 year old or 28 year old who's earning, you know, 25 or like my daughter, 40,000 as a, in fashion, There's nothing, and in trying to live in the city. Yes they can really take advantage of this, particularly if there's no coverage. And if I'm going directly uh, to get insurance myself, or have been, my costs drop 50% or more, maybe more. And if I'm a small business that has been trying to provide coverage for my employees, those costs drop almost 25%. Okay, that, that security industry, oh, yeah. bus company, companies like we, we, like we right. said, they deal with contracts. Right. These contracts is the difference from keeping a contract, losing Absolutely. a contract, not being able to accept it. Right. So I'm good with that. I want to stay in touch with your organization to continue to keep right. this out here. I know um, the we're not the, the website has flaws and it's getting better. Right. But, Particularly in New York State. Yes, yes, yes. New York wasn't as bad. But right. so what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, do you see things that needs improvement? I think they have to fix it. This is ridiculous. I agree with the press that a website to deal with the na nation, with all the expertise in, uh, around in the private and public sector, not to work right away, is uh, someone should should pay for that. That's not appropriate. Now they're fixing it, but they have to put all the resources they can because it is started to undermine the credibility of the whole thing. Yes. And you can't allow that to happen. Okay, but I'm, I'm not even talking about the website. I'm talking about some of the improvements as you're helping people out. Well, I think the what small... What can change? I think small business is focused. Yes. That they had to stretch that out, too. The small business is the focus. I mean, most, you know, people who are earning low and middle yes. income are doing like your security company. That's the engine that is employing most of the people we care about yes. in Bedford-Stuyvesant and Central Harlem and Brownsville. I gotta make sure those small businesses know everything in terms of their rights to get low-cost coverage and also their right to get a tax subsidy mm -hmm. that allows them to do this stuff so they can turn it over to their employees. Okay, now with Obamacare, the next two years, two and a half years, three years, Obama's mm -hmm. in office, how could younger people get jobs promoting and getting out there and teaching people what they need I to think know. I wanted to yeah. refer people to say this is what you need to get a job. Again, in the short term, I don't think so. I am worried, however, and we've talked about this a little, in terms of the job picture. Mm -hmm. And clearly New York City, something I've talked to, to the mayor-elect about, has one of the worst outcomes for young people with a high school diploma or equivalency. You really can't participate in the economy unless that's done. You can't get a Starbucks interview without some college. Yes. That means we're, we're dealing with this massive number, and I talked about the number of disconnected youth in the city of New York is 175,000 of them, overwhelmingly black and Latino. And basically, that group is disadvantaged, basically, because they don't have the skill set necessary to participate. Okay, so we're going to navigate to that part of it right. and move into the new mayor. Right. You had things here at the office. Well, I think the, the new mayor mm -hmm. won his election mm -hmm. by talking about inequality yes. and stop and frisk. Yes. Things that have hurt us badly. I, I always I couldn't believe the outgoing administration didn't understand 
that the outrage towards stop and frisk didn't only among the young people and their parents, it was a generation of us who had been repeatedly stopped and frisked throughout. But, but, did, but then he had hired Bill Bratton, the creator. <laughs> I mean, hi, Bill. Well, Bratton. he's gonna. He says Bill Bratton has seen the light. Let's see. Well, in reality, he's the boss. So if yeah. he said he want the policy stopped, yeah. see, Bloomberg could have done that if he wanted. Of course, to, he if he want the policy of stopped. Well, with Kelly, who knows? I have real difficulty with Kelly because he became such an advocate of this. As even as the information came in, as they topped up eight hundred thousand stops. he you know claimed that this was the only reason that crime crime was falling. That was crap, and well, he knew it. Well, he was against it. I had an article where he spoke yeah. in the 90s, and he said it doesn't work. Look, this was the same uh, Kelly who said he could sh shoot down enemy planes. If my kid suddenly heard me talking about shooting enemy planes down, and I'm 73 years old, mm -hmm. I go straight to the home. You know, now he's a great hero. I, I really am angry at what he did there. Okay. It's the most offensive thing I know, and I have been shoved up against a car in my youth and not so youth. And so was the school's chancellor. This was only a year and a half ago. What was the walk? Yeah. Yes. And you don't get it that this becomes an offensive attack if based on race. If it's not your children, you won't get it. Uh, but what was the alternative? Look, if this had happened to Irish or Italians or Jews, it wouldn't have been the same. I'm sorry. Oh no. There was a deep racism involved in this that I, is unacceptable. And I think the people got it across income and racial lines. They got yes. it. Well, I, I tell you something. How come Bill Thompson couldn't explain that? I, you know, I don't want to rehab. Bill mm -hmm. is an old friend of mine. Mm -hmm. We knew each other from childhood. I think most of us missed how this upsurge. My my father used to always call it that leadership really is not. You don't create the movement. The movement is waiting and latent, waiting to drive you up. And he was the first black assemblyman in Central Brooklyn, and it lifts you up. Now, my father never surfboarded in his life, but individuals who think they create movements are wrong. What it is, you tap into discontent that's been building for years. And that discontent, this income inequality issue. What are some of your expectations for the new man? Well, I want to see him start to recalibrate what's happening to education, not only early childhood, which he's pushing on, but what's happened to the kids who've been disadvantaged. We have more young people. Essentially, we haven't stopped the dropout rate in the city of New York, yes. which in this economy is is a kind of civil debt. We have we to change the curriculum. And we, you can. We, can we change the curriculum? Well, I'm starting to focus on something I never did before, which is career and technical education, something I used to hate mm -hmm. as a kid. That was anathema. But now we're finding, we're about to come out with a report showing young people who get into career and, and technical education, particularly blacks and Latinos, young men, have an incredibly better outcome in terms of graduation rate and outcome in terms of finding employment right away. You have to realize that if I'm 16, 17, and I don't have a skill, even if I get my high school diploma, I can't earn enough money to sustain myself. I need a skill that's immediately useful, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do. Anecdotally, people who finish with first class career and technical education yes. end up going to college in much higher percentages than anybody else. I, I hear a lot of politicians talk about green jobs. And when I ask him, can you tell me what a green job is? Do you know what a green job is? Yeah, I know what a green job is. <laughs> it's you know wind power. Look, I, I have become, uh, it's because I'm becoming old and cranky. Mm -hmm. There's a certain, you know, this is the latest tool of Frankly, I got to get skills that do represent the new economy. Yes. But to focus exclusively on green jobs, I like windmills. I think they're great, you know, solar panels. A couple of difficulties with it, and I've taken it up with some of the exponents of it. If anything, the skill set necessary to participate in the green economy is higher than the skill set necessary to deal with the old economy. For instance, I don't know if you can't become an apprentice plumber or electrician or carpenter unless you have a high school diploma or equivalent. Yes. And this notion these used to be, oh, you just go out and hammer, no more, because you have to read You've got to read the computer also. For green jobs, take that one step higher. Mm -hmm. You have to really be good at math and the rest, which is just the deficits that our kids are, are coming out with. 
And I'm angry because we skewed where resources go in the system. Mm -hmm. When we did a little informal survey of where operating science labs were in the city of New York, sure, Stuyvesant has, yes. but Stuyvesant only has nine Africa. Yeah, Brooklyn Tech has it. We've seen the sharpest drop in the number of blacks and Latinos over this last decade. Mm -hmm. Going to Brooklyn Tech, which used to be the sort of, you know, where people want, mm -hmm. it's dropped by 30% or some craziness like that, below 10% now. It was at 33% before. So we see a, a shift in how educational resources are being put out there. Mm -hmm that we have to open up some of these elite high schools that really do, do lead to elite colleges and the rest and start having at least a representative number of black and Latinos in those high schools. Yes, indeed. We have bright people, I know it, I see them every day. So I think those are the sort of low-hanging fruit for this administration, mm -hmm. but there are many more. I think we have to make sure, and I was unable to do this with the old administration, we have a high school equivalency exam. It used to be called GED, it's called something else now. Every interaction between a young person, I don't want anyone, I want early release for somebody at Spofford if okay. they get their GED. Well, wait, 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 we're gonna yeah. come back to that. I work law right. enforcement and corrections. Yeah. We're gonna take a quick break, Okay. pay the bills, and we're gonna come back to that very briefly because I know you got a lot of things to do. Okay. We'll be right back. We are back, Norman Graham. Mr. Jones, you have important numbers here. Right. So, for your viewers, there's a toll-free line and website for the state of New York, mm -hmm. and that's New York State of Health, just spell it out there, mm -hmm. and that's how you get on the website, mm -hmm. at newyorkstate.gov, okay. and that toll-free number is 1-855-355-5555. Repeat that again. Okay, it's 1-855-355-5777. Now, we want people to know the extraordinary work that you're doing here. Right. Do you have your website? Our, our website, basically it's easier to reach us through our CSS Navigator mm -hmm. hotline, okay. which is 1-888-614-5444. Okay, and they can talk to a live person. Sometimes the wait gets a little long, okay. sometimes we're overwhelmed, but we'll uh, try to help you with your unique questions and difficulties. Okay. Okay. We'll be on the trail with you also. Okay. We thank you, Great. Mr. Jones. Okay. We'll be back. <laughs>